Hi, it's Linz from Sweet Natured, and today we're taking a look at what costs to consider when taking a longer cruise. As always, I'm joined by Mackie. Hello. Hello, who put the video together, and this is my first time watching, so let's see what we can see. As you said in the intro, Linz, we're going to have a look today at what costs to consider when taking a longer cruise, So it's not just about the cruise fare. No. That's what I said. You did say that. Well Thank done. you. <laughs> so we're going to start off by taking a look at excursions. Excursions? Yeah, because if you think about it, the longer the cruise, you're more likely to have more ports to go to. Now, not always. You could be going on a transatlantic and maybe only have two ports. But generally speaking, the longer the cruise, more times you're going to get off the ship. Okay. Now, when you're looking at excursions, yes. the prices range massively, as we well know. Yeah. You've got an example there, £372 per person, through to similar ones for £24. Yes. And huge differences. You've got the official ones through the cruise line. Pricey. Not always. No, so no, not sometimes always. Sometimes I'm being unfair. Really I'm being value. unfair. Other times you can go through third parties, and there can be some significant cost savings. But you don't necessarily have the guarantee that the ship is going to be there when you get back. That's why. I'm, that's what worries me. What, you, what, that it won't be there when you got back? No, that if there was traffic and we were late, they'd go. I mean, what they guarantee with it isn't that the ship will wait, but it's that they will get you to where you need to be or get you back home. Because if, for instance, you were stuck at the other side of the island and it was going to take you two days to get back for whatever reason, the ship's not going to hang around and wait for you. Whereas if you take a third-party one, it's your own responsibility. This puts me off get, getting on an excursion going to the other side of the island. Not specifically talking about excursions, <laughs> but lots of them. The other things to consider as well, when you're on an excursion, is you've got additional costs. You might want to get something to eat. Yes. Now, some excursions, and you have to check the small print, include food. I like those. Others might include the odd nibble. Okay. So this one here. So you wouldn't class it as a meal. <laughs> a light snack. Rather than... Niblet. Rather than an odd nibble. <laughs> Please an don't nibble. Google that. <laughs> But it is something you do have to take into consideration when you're on a longer cruise, because you are more, much more likely to have more. And therefore, you should be working on about, about £100 per port per couple as a minimum. That sounds expensive. Well, that's only £50. Oof. Now, £50 is a relatively cheap excursion. But if you work on that, so if you're going on a 14-night cruise and it's got five stops, it's going to cost you... Wowzers, you can see why people don't do the excursions and just go for a wander. Linz, would you like to invite people to subscribe? I would love to invite people to subscribe and thank you if you already have done. And if you'd like to support the channel even more, we do now have a Patreon and a YouTube membership and it's at Sweet Nature. Thank you. Thank you. Next thing to consider, drinks. This is very important to me. Very important to us. Now that, drinks is not just cocktails and alcohol. Mm -mm. but sodas, bottles of water, anything, coffees, teas that tea. you might want. But tea. speciality such as Starbucks or Costa or... Tea with a teapot. Tea with a teapot. Now, most cruise lines, and I'm struggling to think of any that don't, have a drinks package. Some of the six-star ones include it automatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But most of the big cruise lines have a package. Now, not every drink's included in the package. You might want to spend a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. Or you might want to simply pay as you go. Yes. Now, the ultimate drinks package there, that's £40 per person per day, as an example on P&O. If you look at Royal Caribbean, theirs is a varied amount, so it's not fixed. On some cruises, it might be 30 or £40 or $40 a day. It might be as much as 80 I'm putting my wine glass up. Well, I'll answer that in just one second with your oh. wine glass. You might also look at a package that includes more than just the drinks, such as gratuities, Wi-Fi. Okay. But you've then got things like NCL's one, which is up to $138 per person per day <laughs> for the drinks package. Now, to be fair, it's a very fancy one. But we reckon that you need to budget around $50, a £50 per day per person. Right. What were you going to say with your wine glass up? I like a drinks package. You do? It. I don't like the guilt when you order a fancy cocktail and you're not on the drinks package that's covered by the drinks package. That's the advantage of it. But whichever way you do it, whether you're getting a drinks package or you're just going to have that, 
You probably want a budget for around there, and obviously it's longer. Okay. Weather and clothes. Now, you might say, why does a longer cruise do that? I know this question. You do know this question. Because why would it matter about weather and clothes? Because you might start in a cold place and finish in a hot place. Or the other way around. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. <laughs> um, it, when you, again, when you're doing a longer cruise, you're much more likely to be going further afield. Now, you might start this side of the Atlantic and end up at the other side. You might start one side of the uh, of America and end up at the other side of the States. You're going to go through <laughs> lots of different things. And as you can see on this picture here, you can wake up one morning and it'd be glorious sunshine. The next morning, you can't see 200 foot in front of the ship. No, and you need a jacket. You do. You're also going to go through clothes quicker as well. You're probably not going to pack enough clothes to last the full 14 days. Plus. In that bed. So you have to also consider doing some laundry. Yes. Most ships have an onboard laundry that you can go use yourself. Not you, Royal Caribbean. But not all of them. No. So you might have to pay for a bag of washing, certainly for your sort of underwear, your delicates that you need doing. Yeah, and make sure that your delicates underwear is tumble dry friendly because they have industrial tumble dryers that, yeah. that and things come back smaller, not that you've got bigger. Is that what you're going with? <laughs> That's exactly what. I, I think what that was the excuse I used. Big time. <laughs> but it's also worth thinking about as well, depending on what cruise line you go, what dress code they've got. Yes. If you look at Cunard, for instance, on a seven-night cruise, they will have two gala evenings. Yes. Therefore, on a 14-night cruise, they might have four. Ooh. So you have to think about what you're packing. You can also look at your itineraries, such as on p and and it'll tell you what day the celebration night or the gala night or the formal nights are going to be as well. So you need to be able to bear in mind that you might need to buy something if you don't bring it or wash something. Yeah. I mean, we, we suggest that you allow for around about 50 pounds 50 dollars a day um, uh, how much uh, sorry for the two-week cruise not per day that would be ridiculous what's happening that you need that much laundry <laughs> but about 50 dollars 50 pounds for the <laughs> for the two-week cruise speciality dining now if you're on a two-week cruise the chances are you might want something different to the inclusive dining at some point yes no matter how much you like the inclusive dining if it just if it's a smaller ship and it just has a main dining room and not lots of other food venues, you might want a different change. Oh, you've got a special occasion or something like that that you'd like to celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we look at it when we go on the speciality restaurants, we treat them like a date night. Yes, we do. And you get dressed up a little bit for it, you have a fancy yes, meal, we do. have some nice things. And some cruise lines, the packages that you get, such as on Princess's Premier One, you have a couple of speciality ones in. Uh -huh. Some of the more expensive cruise lines... There's no upcharge for it. Yeah. And cruise lines like Virgin don't have any. Also, if for their date night, you don't feel you sat with the couple next to you either or the, or the group next to you because the tables are quite yeah. widely spaced yeah, out. Yeah, they tend to spread it out a little bit more than in the main dining room. You also, in a lot of restaurants, have the ability to uh, up-spec or sort of upgrade your meal a little bit more. Maybe a, a side of lobster, maybe a tomahawk for two or some oysters. But you get to do different Ooh. bits and pieces. And again, some cruise lines also have packages that you can buy for the full cruise that works out cheaper than buying them separately. Yes, yes. But you, in our experience, most people want to try the speciality restaurants at least once or twice on a cruise. They t yeah, yeah, I would say. Yeah, some people are like, no, I've paid for what I've paid for. I'm not doing it. Yeah. But we, we like you say, we treat it like a date night. It is. And if you're on a two-week cruise, personally, I would want to try some of the other restaurants and, and yeah, food that yeah, are available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I say, certain ones like Virgin's one, they don't have speciality restaurants, everything's included, but you do have the ability to pay more to upgrade your meal. Like we did for the oysters. the oysters, yes. And you also have things like the, the pairing of cocktails as well in, in there. But we, we reckon that it's you work on an average of about £30, $30 per venue per person yeah so if you're going this to go three times up. i've got some maths at the end oh minutes. no next up tips and gratuities okay now most cruise lines do have a compulsory gratuity service that they charge such as royal caribbean uh, around 16 dollars per day in a balcony or inside one more if you're in a suite princess have the same starting at 14.50 up to 16.50 uh celebrity up to $21 per person per day 
on top of it, which you can prepay. I'll get an advance, but once that PO, don't charge for it. But you do need to take it into account, and it works out on average about fifteen pounds, fifteen dollars per person per day. And we like to. Um... And you might want to tip on top of that. Yes, well. yes, which we like to do with with staff members that we, that we feel think are, yeah. have done an excellent Certainly service. Certainly, you stewards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Internet and Wi-Fi. <laughs> now, not all cruise ships are made equal when it comes to this, but the prices are fairly uniform. Even though the speed isn't. No, absolutely. Now, what you might want to consider is: are there any packages? Because you look at that, the unlimited one there for one device is forty-four um, dollars per day. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Some have packages that include them in there, but if you're on a fourteen night cruise, you're more like or a longer cruise, maybe you're on a twenty five night or a world cruise, then you're probably going to want to stay connected more than you would if you were just on a four night cruise. I, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, you're much more likely to need internet access on the longer cruise than you are on a short one for being like being dialing out, of unconnectable. Uh, absolutely, but there is a significant cost for that. None of them have got it cheap. Probably the cheapest is the Princess one within its package. But their Wi-Fi last time we went on it wasn't great. But you should be working on about £15 or $15 per device Oof. per day. This is... Yeah, I'm going to have to have a drink. <laughs> but it does stack up quickly. Then on top of that, general spending money. Oh, my money. goodness. So whether you're buying presents for family, casinos, uh, some little treats, you might be going to the spa or things like the sanctuary or the retreat going into things like the hydrotherapy pool, all those are extras over and above. And again, the longer you're on a cruise, the more likely you are you're going to want to use some of these facilities at least once. Yes. I mean, this is working. I, I'm worried now because we're going on on a 14-night cruise in two weeks. <laughs> at the time of recording. At the time of recording. So we we were like, how much are we going to need and I'm worried. Well, you might be when you get to the end of it. Oh, good grief. You've also got things like the casino. Yes. And we know different ships around different parts of the world, the casinos can be incredibly popular. Yes. And on certain ships we've been on, absolutely deserted. Yeah. Generally speaking, they're pretty big. You might want to pick up a tow bomb. You might even want to just get an ice cream or a gelato. Which are, are an extra fancy gelato. On certain cruise lines, some they are, some they're not. Yeah. So, again researching this around your cruise as to where you're going to want to spend those bits and pieces before. And, of course, then there's the shops. Hmm. And, and the shopping and art galleries, for instance, for a lot of people are a big part of cruising. Yeah. We always see the jewellery stores very busy. We've, we've, we talk to people and somebody's always bought a watch. When we speak to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and some very expensive pieces of jewellery. You'll see one here in a second we, which we loved. Uh, we didn't buy it, I would like to be clear, but the Tanzanite heart-shaped necklace, I think it was like $25,000. So obviously, if you're going to do that, you probably want more than the €300, pounds $300, oh. per week that I'm talking about, or if you're buying art. But generally speaking, if you're looking at spas, bits and pieces like that, about sort of 600 for a 14 night cruise is probably about Good right. grief! So, how much do you really need? Based on two people for a 14 night cruise with five ports, drinks 1400, laundry 50, 180 for the restaurant. 50 tips, for laundry? Well, basically, 2860 No. Based on just what we talked about. Now, to be clear, you can go on a cruise and not spend a penny. And we know people that do. We know the vloggers that I'm, do. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. How much is the drinks package? Did 1400 you... on that particular example. Oof. Uh, and that, that's about an average. That's like the cost of a cruise and a bit. It is. So when, you can, when you're looking at these cruises, you do have to take into account what's actually included. Are you better off getting a package for all those other bits and pieces? Where do you go? I, d- I don't believe it. It was there. It was math. I don't says. believe it. I don't believe the maths. You don't believe them? Are you, are you, you know I'm math. It? No, I'm not. I'm not well, having it. That's the end of another video. I'm not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for watching. And cheers, Lance. Cheers, and have a lovely day.